Throughout the lockdown, I spent most of my time walking up on the beautiful and rugged Culmstock Beacon, exploring the wildlife, stunning views and magical surroundings. It's a wildlife haven and attracts a great amount of animals, reptiles and birds. One of the many reasons why I love walking up there is a change in the atmosphere at the different times of the year. In the spring, you can see the frog spawn metamorphosis into frogs. In the summer, you might catch a glimpse of the disguised adders cloaked in with the terrain, and astounding sunsets shimmering on the horizon. In autumn time, you can feel the familiar breeze brush upon your shoulder once again, and in winter, you can wrap up warm and see the frost, ice and snow glimmer on the paths. High on the southwest point on Blackdown Common is Culmstock Beacon. It is one of a chain of Elizabethan beacons used for lighting fires to warn of advancing enemies, for example, the Spanish Armada. The beehive-shaped structure was built of flint and was rebuilt after the collapse of the earlier one. The beacon has been lit up for numerous celebrations, including the Queen's Golden Jubilee in February 2002. I loved how the colours in this image connected local history to the broader landscape and nature, which is so important when considering the environment. It felt as though this beacon should be found along many routes, and again connects us to our local history through all of the things that this building has seen. The Druid on the Ruins is one of my favourite places to visit while at Sugarborough Hall. It is a family favourite as long-standing members of the National Trust, but I think that it is a perfect frame for the river behind, as you can walk into it and view the wildlife passing by, including swans, geese and other waterfowl. The contrast between the well-upkept gardens and house, and the disappearing ruins, is beautiful, and I think it intertwines past and present perfectly. This was a beautiful image that showed how local history weaves into our world like the branches around the folly or ruin. It felt like something magical and the colours made it feel really warm. The Posada Pub, Litchfield Street, Wolverhampton. This is a Victorian Grade II listed building situated in the town, now city centre. Built in 1886 on the site of the old Noah's Ark Inn. It still has many of its original fittings and fixtures, including ceramic tiling inside and out. Rare snob screens and beautiful floors that absorb the natural light coming through the stained glass windows. For me, it's always been the pub where the fans of Wolverhampton Wanderers stream out of, having pre-match drinks before supporting their team at Molyneux. As a young teenager, I always wondered how so many noisy, golden black fans could fit into such a small place. Once old enough to use the pub for its intended purpose, I discovered the big beer yard at the back, an iconic and much-loved building in Wolverhampton. Carol Langford's pub interior perfectly tells the story of years of use by the locals and we love the tie-in to stopping off on the way to see the wolves play. The use of limited depth of field to throw the background slightly out of focus was very effective. The only thing linking us to the present was the lack of cigarette smoke. Grade 2 star listed Sandfields pumping station is a forgotten hidden historic gem. Like most industrial heritage building, its familiarity in the landscape has eroded away the curiosity of the casual passerby. Yet this Romanesque styled masterpiece is a cathedral to the Industrial Revolution, for years unloved, for years abandoned. 
Its Romanist style took the language from the past and built the way to the future. Celebrating new technology and progress, it brought life-giving clean water to the beleaguered communities of the industrial black country, bringing health and well-being to all. This building and its historic contents showcase the provision of clean water that seeded the developments that enabled Britain to become a modern industrial country. Britain led the world in technical and scientific developments that have improved the quality of people's lives worldwide and are a testament to the vision of the Victorian engineers and their philanthropic endeavours. Let us look at this building and remind ourselves of the tens of thousands of people who died in the cholera epidemics of the mid-19th century. Most of these unfortunate people were buried in mass graves or cholera pits with no identity, dignity nor recognition of their lives. This building is a monument to their life, giving them back a voice that allows them to tell their remarkable story. The heritage of the modern water industry is almost entirely absent despite its unarguable relevance to human development. We all agreed that David Moore's evocative picture of Sandfield's pumping station was a worthy winner. His use of dramatic moody light emphasises the subtle beauty of the Victorian architecture. We are much more utilitarian now. The words beautifully illustrated its importance for public health. 